Hi everybody, in this video I'll show you how you can undervolt your uh, Ryzen 9 uh, 9950X 3D uh, CPU. Uh, in the BIOS, I'm gonna explain to you in MSI uh, BIOS, but it might be slightly different, uh, depends on the motherboard you're actually using, or again, if you're using even the same for the same company, it might be some different, depends on the version, but it sh should be the same. Uh, more or less. Now, I personally have an MSI motherboard. So what I did, I went to their website. I actually found on the official website and found this post that says how to use Curve Optimizer to lower Ryzen and 9950X 3D temperatures and boosting uh, performance with the Curve Optimizer. Keep in mind, I'm not going to do overclocking here. I'm just going to show you how it is done. They actually suggested, you know, give not suggested, gave a few example and, and show some results. Uh, but of course, this may vary. I mean, there are various uh, things that actually uh, affect how much you can undervolt, like the CPU, GPU architecture. Again, in this case, the, the CPU. Uh, uh, what people call silicon lottery, the quality of the chip, uh, motherboard VRAM, the voltage regulator module quality, power supply unit quality and stability, temperatures of the component, BIOS, UAE, FI settings, specific workload and application, stability requirements, type of cooling solution, the age of the component, and so on. Now, from what I've seen for the 9950X 3D, uh, many, again, unofficial, recommend going with uh, 20 undervolt, like minus 20 uh, for both. Uh, this probably will work for most people. Now, because it can lead to instability of your computer, uh, it's very important to test it out. Uh, there are three ways to actually do uh, uh, solve it if you have issues. Uh, if you can even load your uh, computer is either um, using the CMOS jumper. With most motherboards have a small jumper or two pins labeled CLR CMOS or CLRTC or similar. And you move a jumper cap or briefly short the pins with a screwdriver uh, to clear the CMOS, the memory that stores the BIOS settings. And uh, of course, you must power also uh, power down your system and unplug the PC first. Yeah, make sure to read about it before you actually do it, if you decide to do it. Uh, the other thing is by removing the CMOS battery. So you can, uh, you know, it's powered by a small coin cell battery on the motherboard. So to reset the BIOS, you power down, unplug PC and remove the battery for a few minutes before reinserting it. This drain the power from the CMOS memory, resetting the settings. And another thing, if you have it, which is the easiest way, is if you have a dedicated button. I do have at the back, when I look for my motherboard, uh, again, some iron motherboards uh, will have it. It's a physical clear CMOS button uh, on the I.O. panel or on the motherboard itself. And this is the fastest uh, way to actually do it, just in case you have any problems. Now, that aside, these are probably what people recommend you to stress test your CPU, uh, Prime 95, OCCT, uh, IDA 64. Uh, three of them are very good because they're going to really put stress on your system. Uh, people recommend you know, testing out at least 10 minutes. Some people even test it for an hour just to be sure. Some people also mix with some high demanding games that do use, uh, make use of high CPU. Uh, I mean, sorry, have high CPU usage because many games won't actually, most of the uh, stress will be on the GPU, but there are some games that put more stress on the CPU, so people are gonna check this out as well. Now, I do recommend reading more about it before you start doing it. There are lots of information out there, this is nothing new. Now, for how you can actually do it in the BIOS. Well, restart your PC uh, uh, once you are in Windows. Now, once you do that, it depends on your motherboard. For example, I have an MSI motherboard, so I just need to press delete in order to be able uh, to get to the BIOS. But it really be different, might be different for you as well, or you can try pressing delete as well, it might work for you. Uh, you need to wait, for me, for example, I need to wait until I see a logo. This is a, a logo for uh, MSI, for the motherboard. So this is the moment where I can actually see that I can actually can click it. It actually tells me that I can actually click delete in order to enter the BIOS. All right, you can see it here right now. And once I click it, I'm in the BIOS. Now in the BIOS, and in this case, this is MSI. So if you're looking for MSI, well, you are lucky. Uh, we're gonna go to um, uh, advanced. You can see at the top, we are in advanced. Uh, then we're gonna go to uh, overclocking. 
Keep in mind, you might see some screen, pop-up screen that tells you that you need to give permission in order to continue, just so you know, I already did it, so this is why everything is open for me. But if you see uh, something like that, you need to read and uh, acknowledge the pop-up in order to continue. Then, advanced CPU configuration. Then we're going to go to AMD overclocking. And precision boost overdrive. All right, and then advanced here. Uh, I'm not going to use uh, everything on auto except for the CPU boost clock overdrive. This is disabled because I don't want to uh, boost, I don't want to overclock. All right, this is again something for another video. And then curve optimizer. All right, and then here there's different options. You can go with uh, choosing for all cores or per core or per CCD. Uh, of course, uh, the most precise one is f you know, all uh, per core, but it takes a long time. Most people go either all core or per CCD. PCC per CCD is the most, I think, recommended. Uh, you can become assigned for each one, uh, each core. Now, put negative because, again, we are under volting, so don't put neg a positive. Negative, so basically it's like minus 20, but you can write minus. You need to choose negative and then the number, the volume. And for example, if you want to start with something that, you know, probably will work for most people, uh, this is uh, 20. So for, for example, here I put 20 uh, for the CCD0 and 20 for CCD1. Remember, make sure to choose negative uh, and not positive, all right? As you can see here. And then if it's stable and you test it, you want to try it even more, you can increase it, for example, 25, uh, even 30. Uh, and you can just try to see what works best for you based on the stability of your system after testing it. Again, if you feel you're uncomfortable or not sure, make sure to read about it more. There are plenty of information there on the web, but that's by me. Thanks for watching.